What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and today we will be going over three different one light setups that you should have in your bag. I will be shooting today with the Sony a7 IV and the Sigma 24 to 70. So we're switching it up and I want you all to welcome Emily back to the channel. We are very excited to get into this content. So let's hop right into the first look. So the first lighting setup that we're gonna go over is the Rembrandt lighting setup. And what this is, is the light is approximately 45 degrees off of your subject's face. So in Emily's case, it's gonna be 45 degrees off of the left side. We're gonna be using a big seven foot umbrella with our 8600 BM. And what I like to do to try and line up this Rembrandt lighting is this little pole here, I try to have it shooting right at my model's face, roughly. You're gonna move it determining on where that hotspot is, but what we are trying to achieve is a small patch of highlight on the right side of Emily's face, cast it through her nose. So I'm gonna get a test shot here so you all can see the effects that this Rembrandt lighting is having on Emily's face. So you can look straight at me, Emily. Thank you, three, two. And as you'll see, we're getting a nice little highlight on the right side of Emily's cheek. Now, if that's something that you don't really love too much and you wanna kinda switch it up mid-session, what you can do is have the model move her face, or his face, left to right to play around with how that shadow is casted. So, Emily, I'm gonna have you look slightly toward the light. Yep, right there's good. And three, two. Now, just by having Emily change the direction of her face, we've now increased that highlight. So we have more of a flat look and a fully illuminated face. But now, Emily, we're gonna come this way just a little bit. Yep, right there. Three, two. And with having her turn away from the light, we've now increased the amount of shadow and decreased the size of that highlight to make it a little bit more moody and dramatic. So that's one of the lighting setups that you should always keep in your repertoire. It's very, very flattering on all different facial types. And this is one that you must have for your one light setups. Bonus tip here, if you do want to control your light ratios, as we talked about in our last video, you can add what is called a V-flat to your setup. V-flat, or actually you can add a reflector on the white side. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that Rembrandt lighting bounce some of the light back into Emily's face and it's gonna even out that shadow depth that we get on that fill side. So I'm gonna take a test shot here just so you all can see what the addition of that V-flat is gonna do. So Emily, you're gonna look straight here at me. Perfect. And if we compare that shot to the first shot we took where there was no V-flat in the frame, you will notice that there is a lot less shadow definition on Emily's right side. You can play with the distance that your V-flat is or your reflector from your model's face, and that will determine how much fill you get on that fill side. But just in case you wanted to add in a little bit of extra sauce to this first one light setup, there we go. For the second lighting setup, we are about to get a little more dramatic. We will be shooting with just a bare bulb flash, the 8600 BM, and this will be pointed directly in front of our model. This is going to cast shadows directly behind her. And one thing to note here, when you do start to use the harder light, you will see all blemishes. And if you have someone that doesn't necessarily have a skin type that you want to overemphasize, then this is a setup that I would not recommend using. But let's go ahead and get some test shots in, get dramatic and see what this bear bulb is gonna do. All right, Emily, so I'm gonna have you looking straight at me for this first test shot. I'm gonna start with a medium shot. Three, two. And with this shot, you're gonna notice that we are getting some very harsh light on the face. This will be actually very reminiscent of those of you that love to do natural light photography. And the way you're gonna see her shadow definition on the background is casting right behind her. So this is one of the more flattering ways to use this lighting setup, but we're gonna tweak it just a little bit and have Emily lift her chin ever so slightly. Still gonna be looking at me. Gonna take this test shot, three, two. And what that's gonna do is allow a little bit more light onto her face. One thing to worry about with this lighting setup is casting some heavy shadows under the eyelids. And in order to mitigate that, we can just have our model lift their chin ever so slightly. So now we're gonna get into some full body shots just so you can see the full dramatics of this lighting setup. But one thing to note, when you're shooting with that bare bulb, you wanna make sure that you're shooting on some form of a boom arm. This way you don't have a C-stand smack dab in the middle of your shot when you're trying to get the shots that you want and you won't have to move the light around too much so that it's not in your way. I have done this before in the past. So this is a mistake that we will all make and you're gonna make it too. And I had to reach around and shoot in front of that C-stand. 
no worries. Let's get a few test shots with the wide bodies so we can see the dramatics of this lighting setup. Emily, we're gonna keep our posing pretty similar. I'm gonna keep my focal length the same at 70 millimeters. So I'm gonna use my feet here and move back. And let's get us a good test shot here. Three, two. And then let me have one where you put that chin up ever so slightly. Yep, three, two. And the coolest thing about the bare bulb flash is the sharpness of the shadows that you get from your subject. Notice they are falling right behind Emily, which is the goal, because this in most cases is gonna be the most flattering. And how I would use this is say you're doing like a jewelry brand. You're shooting something that has to do with skincare and you really want that skin to pop. You want something to have a big shimmer to it. This is a great lighting setup to do that. But let me show you how to make it a little more dramatic. So to make this lighting setup a little more dramatic, we took the light off, I would say 45, about 45 degrees off to the right side of Emily's face this time. And what this is gonna allow us to do is throw those very sharp shadows off to her left side. So we'll take a few test shots here just to show you what this new adjustment is doing to our light. So we'll start in close. Let's start in close with you, Emily. Yep, gonna do a medium shot. Three, two, take it out and do a wide shot. Three, two, perfect. And what you're gonna notice with these two shots is now, just like the Rembrandt lighting that we did in our first lighting setup, we are casting a nice little highlight slash shadow onto the opposite side of Emily's face. But with the bare bulb, they're going to be much sharper shadows. So I'm gonna get an even closer shot to really illustrate what this is doing to her face when you have something, so I'm going all the way up. Yep, three, two. Because when you have a shot like this, not only is it gonna create some really cool shadows on the side of her face, but when we back it out to that wide and we compare it to that wide shot, you can see just how drastic those shadows are falling on her left side. So say you're in something like a psych wall and you can back up super far, grab you a really wide lens, you'll really get to see how cool those shadows are falling. And this is just something that you wanna play with and remember, Get that boom arm because you don't want to be like me trying to DIY all of your shots. Let's move into lighting setup number three. So for our third and final lighting setup of the day, we are going to be doing the backlight slash silhouette. And a few things to note here, you do want to have your model pretty close to the softbox, about as close as possible. I would say about a fist away from your softbox just so that that light can have like a sort of wrapping around effect. And another thing that I'm gonna do is while we are tethered into capture one, I'm going to turn on my exposure warning. What I'm looking for with that exposure warning is for my entire softbox to be all red. This means that I'm overexposing my softbox and that means I'm getting a very clean white background. The thing that I'm also looking for is to make sure that no red is bleeding onto Emily, right? I don't want it to wrap too much. This becomes very apparent when you use a studio with very close white walls or you're in like a home studio, small space where light is bouncing all around. So you turn on that exposure warning to make sure that your background is nice and blown out, but you're not necessarily bringing that onto the front of your subject because we do want it to be silhouetted. Now let's take a few test shots here and just see. Now with the silhouette, I do not meter. It's more of a taste type of deal. So we're gonna come yep, right here. It's more of a taste type of deal. So I'm gonna take a test shot here with Emily looking straight at me. Three, two. Boom, and we have Emily nicely silhouetted with a cool glow going around the back side of her. I'm gonna have her turn to profile, so either way is fine. Yep, that's good right there. And then you're gonna be looking straight. Yeah, three, two. And I really love the profile shot because you get a very nice rim on Emily. And what you're gonna do now when you get in a post is you're gonna bump up that contrast, bring down those shadows, bring those whites up, and that's gonna allow you to get even more of a silhouetted type look. But if you wanted to take this a little bit further, let me show you what we do now. So in keeping with this theme, if you want to bring a little bit more spazzazz to this lighting setup, I would add a white V-flat, or what you can do is take the softbox and push it up against a white wall. All we're looking for here is a little bit of bounce. And what we wanna do is this light here that's coming from our blown out background, it's gonna bounce off of this white V-flat and give Emily just a little bit of fill. It's gonna bring her fill up just in case you wanted to say, emphasize like some jewelry or you wanted to give a little bit more light to your model because you don't necessarily like the fully blacked out silhouette. 
I'm gonna get a test shot here and show you all exactly what that is doing. For this setup, posing wise, I like for the model to go profile. So you go profile and then bring that body just a little bit toward me. Let's have you step forward just a touch. Yep, right there, back, back and then forward this way. Yep, that's good. I'm gonna go here, chin up just a little bit. Yep, three, two. Perfect. And with this setup, what you're gonna notice is our light is bouncing off of that V-flat and back into Emily. These look amazing when they are done in black and white and you really increase that contrast. So this is a lighting setup that is very great if you wanna add like a little bit of something different and a pop of dramatic on your timeline. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for three One Light Studio setups. Emily, let's clap it up. First two timer on the page. Thank you. What was your favorite lighting setup out of the three? My favorite was the third, only because it was like way more dramatic. I also blinked and blinked out during the first like two, so I'll say three. It is early <laughs> in the morning. It is early to had me here at early. like 10 a.m. Yeah, not great. We're gonna work on no our coffee. sleep schedule. It's no. all good. Start a new channel, Brent Sleeps. We're gonna work on sleep schedules. Anyway, yes, there we go. Emily, where can the people find you? Instagram, E-M-X-L-Y-Y-G underscore. You all know the drill. I'm gonna put it down here so you can spell it properly. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And comment down below any other things that you would like to see me break down or go a little bit more in depth with, and we will catch you in the next video.